Good day, everyone. Thank you very much to the folks at SK Ghost Associates and for all of you participating. I am Don Allen, Director of Engineering for Super Stud Building Products, and we've got a lot of material to cover today, so I'm going to step right into it. Uh, up on the screen right now, we have the format, so we will be having 30 minutes after the hour our first break, and then question and answer session after that, which will continue. So, our objectives for today are to understand the proper way to lay out cold form steel shear walls, and uh, this is covering all of light frame construction when it comes to the layout and the load flow and the load path. This covers light frame construction in steel as well as uh, wood construction. So there's a lot of similarities there, and no matter which uh, system you're designing, these cold form steel shear walls or wood sheath shear walls or wood frame shear walls, they have the same type of load pass, the same type of loading. We're going to learn how to calculate the deflection specifically for cold form steel shear walls using the equations in the code. Uh, learn where it makes sense to use the different types of shear walls, where you, whether you're going to use strap brace or wood sheath or steel sheath cold form steel shear walls, or even a total, uh, totally different lateral system entirely. Um, we're going to go through some shear wall design examples using both wood and steel sheathing, and we're going to look at the transfer of lateral loads through different parts of the system to get the load into the fuse, to the, the load dissipation mechanism, if we're talking about seismic loads. And then we're going to talk about the proper detailing of these systems, including the hold downs and the shear transfers at the individual floors. So this is a, uh, a building. This actually was taken from a real project. It was a Hilton Garden Inn. You may recognize the little one-story lobby out front, which is characteristics of these type of structures. Uh, down on the first floor, they have meeting rooms, uh, swimming pools, offices, and whatnot. So a lot of the areas on the first floor, you're not necessarily going to line up with where the, uh, where the walls are above for the rooms. So in, uh, in this application, where would we put the shear walls in this building? Well, it's going to depend a little bit on where, how the joists are laid out. Quite frequently, if you're using something like cold form joist or wood joist, they are laid out from side to side, or from here, from demising wall to demising wall. So this gives you examples of the joist going from side to side, and then uh, sometimes you have to change direction when you're laying it out in the hallway. Now, when you're using, say, some heavier joists, like open web bar joists, sometimes you can skip over the demising walls, and you can go from end wall, skipping a wall, maybe a plumbing wall, and go every other unit to a bearing wall in between. And also with a longer span type joist, you can span from corridor to exterior wall. So again, none of the demising walls in between become uh, load bearing, uh, which allows you a lot more flexibility if you're trying to keep an open architecture in this type of system. So. In looking at this type of structure, where would we put the shear walls? Well, a lot of uh, one of the first suspects is the stair towers and elevator towers. You're going to have a long, um, vertical, uh, mostly uninterrupted area around the outside of these. They have to be fire rated, and so a lot of people use this for their shear walls. But quite often in a building like this, where it's long and skinny, you may not be able to get enough capacity just out of the stair towers and the elevator towers. So you have to put some more shear walls in into the system. So quite often you use the demising walls and where you've got um, room, uh, sleeping rooms on the first floor, you've got uh, uh, plenty of these walls to put, uh, to put shear walls in. But in the area over here where you've got meeting rooms, where you've got offices, where you've got uh, other things, maybe the gym, the workout room, you're not able to put those shear walls in, and it's if you're trying to line up shear walls all the way down through the structure from the upper floors, it becomes kind of difficult in these areas, especially in an area like this where the place where all that load is coming down is going to be over a door opening. So let's look a little bit closer at this area. This is the door opening I was talking about. Uh, again, you're trying to line up that shear wall with... Uh, an area right in here, it's lined up with the exterior wall, you're going to have demising walls overhead where you're bringing that shear down, so it becomes a little difficult, and basically you have to put a pretty heavy duty header over this area right here, and that heavy duty header may end up having to be structural steel. Um, so in these applications, you may have to do something like this, where you build a structural steel frame or a bent, and your cold form steel shear walls are going to be up over the top of this, 
coming down on top of it. And then when you get to the corridor itself, then you may have to, uh, you're going to have to put these big uh, moment resisting connectors and this is continued across the other side of the corridor. And all this, though this doesn't show what we were looking at in this Hilton Garden Inn, when you get to this type of door, uh, you're going to have to do something uh, quite unique, either that or you possibly you can get the architect to move the door.